All right. Uh, the defendant entered a plea to the lesser included offense of aggravated sexual assault of a child. Punishment is to be assessed at cap 15 years in the prison. There's a $1,500 fine and the state is opposing your application for deferred adjudication. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Any objections from the state? We just have one matter of clarification, Your Honor. Um, yes. As far as um, page two, the assault bodily injury Mary case, that was actually a deferred case where it was subsequently dismissed. And I just want to be clear um, because the 2005 case that was listed also when you had deferred was uh, eventually dismissed, but it also reflected deferred. Okay. All right. Anything from the uh, defense? Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. State, uh, you're opposed to the application? Yes, Your Honor. And we have no witnesses. May we just proceed to argument? Yes. Defense, do you have any witnesses? I do, Your Honor. Uh, who is your witness? Uh, I have uh, a daughter, a, two, a daughter, and a, two daughters and a wife. All right, call them up, please. Who's your first witness? Could you raise your right hand for me, please? Yes. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. I do. All right, you can lower your hand if you can state your name for the record, please. Uh, Crystal Anaya. All right, could you spell the last name? A-N-A-Y-A. -A -A. All right, defense. Uh, Crystal, in what relationship are you to Mr. Medina? I'm his daughter. Okay, and do you have something you want to tell the court? Yes. Go ahead. I would like to. Um, Your Honor, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to address the court on behalf of my sister and I. Um, I'm very aware of the allegations that my father has been accused of, but these are, those allegations are false, um, Your Honor. So I would like to say a few words. I've had my dad in my life for just one moment. Years now. Stop. He's Stop. been there for every Stop. birthday. Stop. A second. Yes. We're going to check the narrative aspect of, the, of this line of questioning. All right. That'll be sustained as to narrative. Okay. Do you want to just, in your own words, tell what your father has been to you? Um, he's just been there for, every, for, for everything. Um, for every birthday, every holiday, every major event. Um, he's been in my kids' lives, my sister's lives, um, like for almost 40 years now. I mean, He's just my everything. He's my dad. I have no further questions. All right. Thank you. Any questions, State? Yes, Ms. Anaya, do you have any kids? I do, yes. I have two boys. You have two boys? Yes. Um, I'll pass what is all right, thank you. Any any further? No, no further questions, Your Honor. All right, call your next witness, please. I'm speaking on behalf of Ms. Medina. All right, could you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, Your Honor. All right, you can lower your hand. Could you state your name for the record, please? My name is Lydia Medina. And Ms. Medina, what relationship, if any, are you to Eddie Medina? I'm his wife. And how long have you been married to Mr. Medina? We've been married 22 years. Okay. Do you uh, suffer from any physical ailments? Do you have something that medically medical problems that he helps you with yes and what are those uh, i don't drive anymore okay why are you do, is there a specific uh diagnosis yes i'm legally blind okay and do you have doctor's appointments and things yes. like that yes i do and so mr medina is basically your sole source of transportation yes and income yes I have no further questions. All right, thank you. Call your next witness, please. I have no further witnesses, Your Honor. All right, then the court will hear argument. State? Yes, Your Honor. So the state is asking that you deny his application for deferred adjudication and that you send him to the full 15 years in prison. Um, and that's based on a number of things. First, I think the court has to look at the facts of this case as has been stipulated um, by the defendant during his plea. 
Uh, we have obviously egregious conduct, any type of sexual um, uh, touching or, or uh, interaction with the child is obviously concerning and in and of itself might deserve prison. But the aggravating factors on this case, Your Honor, is that the length of period of time that this occurred, um, the age of the child when she was, when this, when this, uh, when these allegations first um, started uh, happening, and then as well as the aggravating factors of, of kind of the threats that he gives um, in order to prevent the, the victim from coming forward and her feeling to be able to come forward um, with the fact that her set grandfather has been touching her for a number of years. Um, then I think we have to look at the conduct of the defendant during his, his sentencing um, and most specific, obviously, during the PSI. Um, it's very clear that he minimizes his guilt. Um, and, and what's even more concerning, Your Honor, is you know, you having dealt with these types of cases, um, your career, um, you see the kind of classic behavior of him projecting um, the culpability uh, of this case on the victim and not on him, for him not being able to keep his hands off of as young as a six-year-old child. Um, and we see him saying things like, she's wearing low-cut blouses and, you know, people were telling her about uh, uh, sexual behavior. Um, and we can go to it specifically. Uh, on page 13, where he says she was way ahead of her time and she was sexually advanced. Um, further, we see on um, page 14 and 15, um, him making comments like, if this happened, why didn't she say nothing to her mom? Why wait four years to say something? I think the court is well aware when you make threats to a child, nobody's going to believe them that or something might happen to them if they come forward, um, that they were being abused. That might be a reason they don't tell their mom. That might be a reason um, why uh, it takes them over four years to make an, uh, an outcry of what's happening to them. Um, also, I see that, you know, in looking at this, he doesn't look about what has happened to the victim and how this has had consequences, not just on her life, but everyone who touches her life. Um, if you look on page, sorry, I have marked, page 12 um, of the uh, PSI uh, says, I don't know why she would do this to me. Well, I think the better question, Your Honor, is why would he do this to somebody so young, somebody who's related to him, and, and most importantly, a child. Um, can't forget that. And so the last thing I think the court has to look at is the effect that it's had on uh, the victim in this case. And, I, and it, um, I think the letter that the court, I'm sorry, that the victim wrote um, that is in, attached to the PSI um, is very telling of a girl um, who, so obviously something happened traumatic. From the outside, you can say this is very traumatic to happen to a child, but even she's telling you um, what effect this has had on her life, um, that she's been having flashbacks, um, that she's even gone as far as says that she almost, this, these things almost made her take her own life. Um, these are things that this child is going to have to live with, not just for the next 15 years, that you know, the term that we are asking that this defendant serve in prison, but she's going to be dealing with this for the rest of her life. This is going to be a, sh a burden on her shoulders for the rest of her life. And not by something that she did, by somebody intentionally, somebody knowingly perpetrating on a child. I, I think 15 years, honestly, is, is um, sometimes it feels like it's not enough. But in this case, it has to be enough based on the plea bargain that the state has entered in with the defendant. And so we're asking that you deny his application and you appropriately sentence him to the maximum under the plea term, which is 15 years. Thank you. Defense. Yes, ma'am. Uh, <clears throat> no, excuse I, me. Are you going to testify? I think you just want to. He just wants to make a statement. I just want to state, make a statement, ma'am. Well, I mean, I can place you under oath, and you'll be subject yes, to yes, questioning. Did you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand. Defense, do you have any questions? Uh, do you have a statement you yes, want to make to the court? You know, well, ma'am, 
everything that the gentleman just said and accused me of, you know, uh, the blouse and rowing, the bl all that time she was coming to our house way before all this has happened. She was coming to our house. She was spending uh, the weekends with me and my wife. She was going swimming in my swimming pool. And as she started to develop, well, I started telling my wife, she was started wearing low car blouses, showing her breasts. And I kept trying to tell her in front of my wife, you need to pick up your blouse, pick up your, I don't know why your dad's not letting you wear that, but you need to pick up your blouse. So I did tell her that to pick up her blouse. Then uh, me and my wife were talking in the bedroom and she has in the bathroom, the bathroom and our bedroom were kind of adjacent to us. And of course she started her monthly. And I told my wife, she needs to let us know when she's starting. That way we can have the proper equipment for her. Okay. So she heard it and she came out kind of upset. And I try to tell her, you need to talk to us and let us know. That way we can have this stuff because me and your mom, we're grandparents. We don't, we don't keep that stuff like, you know, I'm 64 years old. My wife is 54. So we, my wife doesn't have that anymore. You need to let us know what cycle you're at. That way we can have these pads for her. And her spending the, the weekend with us, you know, my grandsons, I got grandsons, I got nephews and nieces, uh, uh, you know, all this stuff that she's accused of me of doing really, really startled me and my wife and my family members that are back here, my sisters that, that are supportive of me of all this allegations that I am getting, you know, I, I've never been in trouble. I've never been in, in, you know, besides what he said about me and my wife had a little conflict. Uh, I, I just retired and, you know, and all this stuff that gentleman is, is saying about my granddaughter, I love her I love, as, as I love my other grandkids, you know, and, and and it just it just hurts me to say to hear all that because if that was the case, my family members wouldn't be here to support me. My daughters wouldn't be here to support me and speak up for me because they know her also. They called her Tia. They called her, you know, all this other stuff, all these birthdays, uh, New Year's. Me and my wife would go out there, buy her presents, all these you know, birthdays that she had. She would come over to our house. She would spend the night at our house. She would sit right next to me and show me her coloring that she was a uh, drawing and so forth and so on. So, I, you know, Honor, I just, I just don't understand, you know, why she, you know, the, I, I can't understand why because the words she grew up on the other side of the family, uh, and the reason, like he was saying, that she was well mature, well, she was because she had aunts that would tell her all these other stuff that grown up should only know. And the reason we know, because my daughter that just re passed away, she would tell us, she would tell my wife and us that she's well ahead of time. And we kept trying to tell her, don't send her over there. Don't go over there to the, it was the family. Don't go over there because, uh, you know, yeah. they've been involved with GP, DPS, yes. uh, police, uh, all over. Uh, all right, sustained. Anyway, I, that's enough. Okay, I'm sorry. That's enough, Judge. Sorry about that. I just had to do a. Uh... Judge, we would ask that uh, you grant him probation. If not, oh, just one second, Mr. Oh. Chair. State any questions? I sure do. Uh, Say, you, Mr. Medina, you talked about all these nice things that you did um, for Leticia. Uh, yes, did that justify you putting her finger in her? I didn't do that, sir. No. Does it? I didn't do that at all. At all. Does it at justify? All. Does it justify you making her touch uh, your penis? It, sir. If look, if if I did that, there is a, a if she can tell you what is there's a certain mole on me, then if she could tell you she saw that, then fine. But I'm here to tell you, none of that's happened. None of it. Okay, my wife. Okay. Ahead, so, so you did all these nice things for her. No, no, no. I, I didn't do all those nice things for her. I didn't. It, it, it was because she was my our granddaughter. Me and my wife did it, not just me. Mr. Medina, Mr. Medina, how this works is I ask the question and then you answer it, okay? So yes, I'll ask you my next question. My next question is, is that you did all of these nice things for her that, um, but she, and um, despite doing all of those nice things for her, your uh, testimony is that she just fabricated all of these things about you. 
Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, my my wife was there all the time. She was there all the time. My my daughter, now that she passed on, she was there all the time. My stepson lived with us at that time. All, I mean, everything happened there at the house, what she's accusing me of. And my wife, I would tell her, she said something in one of them that, uh, that I bathed her. I never bathed her. My wife is here to tell you, I never bathed her, never. I, I don't know where she's got this bathing that I bathed her. I never did. Okay. I would, tell, I would tell my wife, this Mr. Medina, this Mr. Medina, answer the question. Uh, yes, sir. So, again, you, you did all these nice things for her. She just makes up these allegations. And we're not talking about bathing here. We're talking about things like you putting your finger in her and that her, you making her touch your penis. She just made all those things up. I never did, sir. I never did. Okay. I've been the first one to tell you, yes, I did. So I'm, a friend, friend, Marie, friend, I'm a former Marine. I'm a former Marine, sir. And I would tell you right from the get-go, I would never, ever, ever do anything like that to my grandkids. Never. I have... Mr. Medina, Mr. Medina, if you give a yes or no answer. Okay. She, so, you're doing all these nice things for her. She just made up allegations about you putting your finger in her and and other things like making her touch her. She just made those... She never did. Judge, I'm going to object. That's already been asked or asked she never and did. answered numerous times. Never that'll did, be, sir. That'll be overruled. And the defendant has just, um, if you can answer the question, please. No, sir. No, sir. No, ma'am. I never did any of that. Never. So she never. made it up. I'm assuming she did, sir, because I'd be the first one to say, Thank you, I did. I, if, if, sir, if I did all that, I guarantee you, I guarantee you. My family members that are back here, my sisters, my brothers, my wife, my two daughters wouldn't be here with me at all. All right. Any follow-up questions, Mr. Uh, Chirac? I have nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Any uh, further witnesses from either side? Nothing further. Right. Nothing further from uh, the side. state is opposed to the application. What are you asking for, Mr. Chirac? Judge, I'd ask that you put them on deferred adjudication probation, and if not, send them to the minimum of five years. All right, State, uh, you've already stated what you're requesting. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Um, the court is denying the application. The court will find you guilty, sentence you to $1,500 fine, time and money run concurrent. There's to be no contact. Chapter 62 uh, registration, and the court will sentence you to 15 years in prison. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you electronically sign it? And just give us one moment. I'm sorry. No problem. Did you review this document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you electronically sign it? Yes, ma'am. All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, good luck to you, Mr. Medina. Your Honor, we have victim impact. Can we just be put in a breakout room for that? Or we can uh, I will put you in breakout room number one to the courtroom. If it's feasible for you to go to number one, then if you can go to breakout room number one, if it's not feasible for you to do that, then that will not be done. Yes, Judge. Can you please put us in breakout room?